Hello everyone, I'm Molly here with Rose City RV of Michigan and today we're going to take a look at the 12,000 ROK Viking. Is this the correct model for you, you may ask? Here are four key specifications to help you decide. This model can sleep up to three people, possibly four if they're small, has a weight of 2,513 pounds, an overall length of 16 feet one inch, and a height of seven feet 10 inches. So let's take a look inside. Okay, taking a look inside, we're gonna start with the max fan. This is a 12 volt fan that's located inside. This baby will move a lot of air if you leave that outside door open or the windows, you can pull a lot of air through this small coach, which is almost better than air conditioning when you don't have power, because that's a very efficient way to move the air. We do have an air conditioner located here that is gonna require the 10, 110 power. Um, to function that these are a smaller air conditioner. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the BTU on this one But we can list that in the video um, But this is gonna be a smaller air so regular 110 will power this so that's a nice feature and it drains on the outside our little plug um, Is right there and then we have our 30 amp solar controller here When there's no battery hooked up they give you a false reading, but in the real world, there'll be a battery hooked up and then you have the solar panel on top. This is gonna regulate that voltage down um, for the battery. It also is nice because it'll give you a reading um, in here what you're getting from your solar and also um, what your amperage is, which is nice. Down here we have our um, GFI outlet with our charging center, 12 volt charging center. So this is gonna give you the old cigarette plug style, which is nice, a lot of us still use that then the USB there, and then a coax cable, because this is the location of the TV if you're gonna put one in here. So that's where that'll all hook up. Underneath of here, we've got some storage located here. Underneath of here, this storage bin goes to the outside compartment, which we'll show you on the outside. So you can have access inside and outside to that. This is our bed that I mentioned you could sleep three or four on in this coach you could put two little kids here but beyond that you really wouldn't want to and if you were sleeping adults you would only want to put two adults in this coach so that's what it looks like in the down position there and then up in the couch position there now we obviously have a emergency egress window here which you can still use for ventilation if you want up top we have some cargo carrying capacity here with nice nets kind of keeps it open versus a door i like that feature because you can see what you have in there and then right here we have our cassette toilet this is on a hinge and all you do is pull that like so to uh, pull out the tank and to uh, exchange it and clean it super simple little operation here but at least it gives you that inside toilet option so we like that and that just stows away in there and that flips down like so and you can use that as a bench if you want or for storage on top underneath of our full-size bed here you have a large amount of storage so on that side you're going to have more Cargo net area storage. On this side, you're gonna have drawer space, which is nice. And those are nice big drawers, as you can see there. And you're gonna have four of those. Back there, we have our converter, which is where all, our, all of our fuses and breakers are located. And then our CO2 leak detector is located down there as well. And then we put this down, we obviously have a sleepable bed and more cargo carrying capacity up top with windows directly across from each other so you can get that nice cross breeze. Then over here we have our smoke detector, an additional 110 outlet, our light switches, our awning switch is located here, another 110 outlet. So they didn't skimp on the 110 outlets right here which is nice as well and you also have one there. So three really close in range and then also even one near the toilet there. And that's one thing you'll see manufacturers skimp out on a lot. It's a lot of extra labor and a lot of extra material to add extra plugs. So that's nice that they didn't do that on this. This suburban furnace here, um, they've been using a little while. I think it's a good option. We did have a question about it being thermostatically controlled. It is not. This is on a dial and it's going to be uh, similar to a roof air where it just runs at the setting that you set it at. No thermostat, temperature thermostat for that. So 
that's how that works. That is a 110 option, so you will have to have 110 power or 30 amp power outside for that to work. Um, but at least it gives you a heat option. Personally, don't think you need it. It's pretty small in here. A couple of people in here are going to create enough BTUs to keep you warm. If it's real cold, at least you've got something to take the edge off with. So that's going to be the inside here of this coach. Um, we're going to head outside and we'll show you the really cool features on this. Okay, so coming outside to the exciting part, we'll start right over here. We have a leash link located right here. So a nice little dog tie up. No need to carry anything additional there, just the leash to, leash to click onto, which is nice. We have our door latch located here and obviously our awning located here. This is a nice little awning. I like that they opted to go without the bag awning on these um, because the bag awnings are just a lot more difficult to use for people. These are just simply push of a button and now you have your awning out and it's very easy in comparison to the other styles. So I like that feature. Also LED light underneath, which is nice. 110 outlet located right here so you can power up any outside accessories you'd like. And then we have our off-road tires. Um, these have a 3,500 pound axle on them, so you have about a thousand pounds of carrying capacity weight on a unit this small, which is actually really nice, um, considering it's hard to put a thousand pounds in a unit this small, but I've seen people do it, so, um, at least you have that ability. A lot of people have noticed if you've been in the business that they under, um, underdo it on the axle rating, so... If that's something that's important to you, there is some carrying weight on this one allotted, which we like. Next to that, you have a propane gas port located right here. So if you wanted to hook up any additional propane accessories on the outside, you could do that. Now, moving to the outside kitchen, which I and probably many people feel this is the best feature of this trailer. Um, most people spend their time outside, and with that being the case, this feature is exactly that. The outside kitchen you're not going in to wash your hands you're not going in to pop something in the microwave or get something out of the fridge or use the griddle top there or even the two burner up here everything you need on this coach besides sleeping is right out here and we really like that aspect now this is a new grill obviously so it's not set up but this gives you a flat top and the grill underneath so this is a dual purpose flat top and grill which we like we didn't include that in the last video either um, and the other ones did have it as well. This is also a 12 volt refrigerator. This is an Everchill 12 volt, so you can power that when you're off grid easily. I like that feature. Microwave, gonna need shore power for that one. Two burner cooktop, so you can heat up water, percolate coffee or whatever you want to outside. And then a little sink gives you hot and cold right here on the outside. We have our water pump switch here and then our water heater switch located right here. So you can function both of those from right outside. And then we have a 110 outlet that's going to be GFI protected on the inside located right there. Underneath of here is a, just an access panel. Um, I would guess that the water pump is, is in there without running it. I don't know. Um, but the water heater access for winterization is definitely going to be right there as the water heater is located right here on the side of the coach here. So also with this outside kitchen, they did not cheap out on this big... Um, outside kitchen door. This is the big um, blocky one which I think is very necessary on this unit because this is such a big door. Um, when they go to the skinnier ones they're just flimsier and they don't hold up in, in the long run so definitely that is a nice feature and I hope they keep that. Moving on to the side here we have a lot of our um, water and power hook up here. We have our six gallon gas suburban water heater. So I showed you where that button is for that on that side, but this is the controls for the outside. Whenever you've had this stored for any length of time, get out your air compressor and then shoot a little compressed air in your burner tube assembly. This just stops it from giving you a fault reading because you get cobwebs and stuff built up in there. Um, spiders and things love to get inside of that and it stops the gas flow and it won't let you let it run. So it's a good way to help that. Our 30 amp power hookup is right here. Solar on the side feature. So this is not gonna be hooked up into the solar controller you saw inside. This is gonna be on its own. So if you do hook up solar on this outside port, you need to make sure that you have voltage regulation. 
underneath of here we have cable satellite hookup and we have our freshwater fill. So this is how you're gonna fill that onboard freshwater tank. So our freshwater tank on this model is gonna be 27 gallons. Then we have our, what we would call gray drain right here. So if you're running that sink in the kitchen there, that water's gonna come directly out of here. There is no gray tank on this coach. So if you like that, great. If you don't like that, you can get a um, sewer tote tank you can hook straight up into that and let it drain right into there if you need to if not so far so good they've let everybody just kind of drain that off into the ground i'm sure at some point in our future we will not see that anymore then we have our city water connection right here so if the park has an onboard water hookup that's where you'll hook up and then our antifree antifreeze inlet located right here for winterization okay coming down here we have our low point drain we only have one which is located right here Underneath of that, if you kind of bend down here, you can see that freshwater drain. So that's gonna be the cap for the freshwater drain there. And I don't believe any of that has changed from 24 to 25. I think these are all in the same location. Now moving up here, you might wonder what this is. This is gonna be our solar setup right here. And then next to that, we have our on the go ladder system. This is by Lippert. We did a separate video for this. You can check that out if you're interested. You can use aftermarket ladders. That's not a problem. The Lippert one has the hooks, which are nice that line up with this bracket, which, which is a nice feature. Coming over here, we have our outside storage. Now, if you remember inside, I kind of opened that underneath of the couch, the cabinets there. You could see that light coming from outside because we had this compartment open. So this is going to be the outside storage located right here. And as you can see are those cabinet doors, but we have just um, the little table that comes with this. So you can pop that up under the awning or inside or at the outside kitchen if, if you want to. And then we have just some extra accessories that come with it stored inside of here. So that's gonna be your outside storage. And then underneath of here, as you can see, cause we don't have a battery or anything hooked up at the moment. This is our spare tire location. I honestly don't love this location if you're an off-roader. I would highly suggest taking this off and relocating somewhere else if you like to get off-road a lot. If you're not a big off-roader, that won't bother you, um, but if so, you definitely want to store it somewhere else. And then we have a single 20-pound propane tank. Okay, so moving on to the roof, which will include that, you can see we have our 200-watt solar panel, and then we have a complete fiberglass roof with two um, storage bars up there that you could add accessories to. You could put a rooftop tent, you could add a uh, cargo rack, you could add almost anything you want. You could put canoes or kayaks if you could get them to fit. And as long as you're within your weight rating, as we noted on that GVW there. Um, but you can put some storage up there or just keep it for solar. But that's going to be the end of our 12,000 Rock video. If you have questions, please let us know. We'd be happy to answer them. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to keep us going.